All right, welcome back to New Touch Design Editorial. And in this one, we are going to look at how to slice and cut up an image. So one, one image that we're inputting here. And we're going to look at one main technique, but two sort of different outcomes. So the first one is going to be slices and the other one is going to be chunks. So let's just have a quick look before we start. So I'm going to go in here. This is what our network looks like. And um, basically, we're just doing a bunch of replications based on our input image. And in there, we were just doing a lot of manipulations of that image. So we're transforming it and we're using some leveling here and some cropping to change our texture. And then we're just making a bunch of copies of that and using texture instancing to use these textures in a, in a fun way. So in this case, we're just making a bunch of slices and uh, we can add some, some variation to this, uh, both in scale and positioning so um we can yeah very much play with this and uh, get some really really interesting results with just with like one input texture so i think this is a cool way to to work with images and the other part is uh, the chunks where we're basically doing a very similar technique very similar approach but the outcome is, is a bit different where we're not using slices but we're we, we're using rectangular shapes so right let's just get started so as usual, I will delete everything and start from scratch. So I'm gonna add a null to this. So uh, basically what I have here is a movie file in with a texture I created in Midjourney. And here I'm just taking out the, uh, the saturation with the HSV adjust top. You can also work with color textures, but in this case, I just wanna work with a black and white one. So I'm gonna create my null here and right click anywhere and say collapse selected. And I'm gonna call this slices. I'm gonna move it up here and go in here. All right, so I'm gonna call my null here uh, input and I'm gonna add a fit to this. So it doesn't really matter that much what input uh, resolution you have here. In my case, it's like around 16,000 by 16,000, but I'm just gonna like boil this down to 1024 by 1024. And you might want to change the fit to fit outside just to so it's always like perfectly fitting in, into here. All right, so what I'm going to do is set up my replication. So for that, we're going to use a replicator comp. I'm just going to put that here and I'm going to change my replication method to by number, go down with the suffix star to zero and change my number of replications to like 10. It's going to give me sort of warning here because I don't, I, I haven't yet specified a master operator. So I'm going to add a base component here and it's just called as master. And it's important, important that we call this master zero in this case. So I'm going to go back to my replicator and use my master as my master operator. And you can already see it automatically creates uh, 10 copies of my master. Right. So I'm going to give this replicator color because it's quite important. And uh, we're gonna keep this call, these callbacks here because we're gonna use them later on. I'm gonna change my layout to horizontal, no, vertical. So they're all like in, in, a, in rows or in one row. <laughs> all right, so basically what we wanna do here now is we wanna use this, um, this texture and we wanna cut it up and change it in a different way for each replicant, so for each copy. So by the way, I'm also gonna change my operator prefix to like actually let's just call it slice not s slice slice there we go so there so we have like 10 different slices here and um, in my master now I'm going to set this all up and then it's going to be copied so I'm going to split my view by clicking on this item up here and then I'm going to go in my master here and add a select top then I'm going to use my input and just select in here so dot dot slash input. And <clears throat> then we want to add a bunch of operators here to manipulate this texture. So I'm going to add a transform, a uh, level, a crop, a fit, and then a, an out top because we want to send this data out again. All right. So uh, now if I go to my replicator and click all, uh, like recreate all operators, we can see that all of these copies now have the same network and sending out the data here. 
so that's perfect. Uh, so before we actually go further in here, I'm just going to close this and go back here. So we're all basing this thing on randomness and we want to re easily reset this randomness. So for that, I'm going to create a keyboard in chop, which is kind of the base of all of this. I'm going to color this green and I'm going to add a count to this. And um, I'm just going to go here to my limit, change this to loop min max and just change it to like 999 because uh, 999 <laughs> like basically a thousand. So, um, so it just doesn't like go up in infinitely. I just kind of like to do that. And then I'm going to add a null here and just going to call this seed. And I'm going to make this like orange because this is going to be quite important and sort of the base for all of this. So if I press one on my keyboard now, you can see it just goes up with this number. Cool. So again, I'm going to split my view here and go back into my master. And inside of my master, I want to use a pattern. A pattern chop. And I'm going to change the type here to random and my length to one. We just want to have one sample. And then I'm going to use the seed and put it on my, yeah, let's just go like this, uh, on my uh, pattern. So I'm just going to go here and change the channel to just zero. I, I usually like to do that because then it doesn't matter what your channel is called. All right, so this is going to be our master pattern here. So um, every time I press one, we now just get a completely random value between zero and one here. And I'm going to add null and call this master for like, you know, obvious reasons. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything else here. I'm just going to change the, the color maybe to like uh, yellow. It's also important. And now basically we want to do the same thing with the pattern and create like different channels for all of these operators. So I'm going to move these all a bit over there. And I'm just going to start here with my first pattern. So actually, we can close this. By the way, I'm pressing Alt-Z to close that. <clears throat> and on my pattern, again, I'm going to change this to random, length 1. And one, one thing I actually want to do here on my seed is because we, we want to have like a different sort of randomness in every one of my copies. And we have a different number, and that's why it's important. We have a different digit, like a different number for all of these. We, we want to use that and create a different seed for, for every copy. So we can just add plus um, parent parentheses dot digits. So now the seed is going to be different for every, for every uh, replicant. So now we want to do a similar thing for these patterns. So I'm going to use my value that I, cr I created here on my seed, chop reference. Again, I'm going to just change this to like zero instead of gen one. Uh, we can actually, let's just call it seed. It's a bit cleaner. And um, let's call this rotate because that's what we're going to use it for. What I'm going to do here is also add plus me dot digits. So we have a different, like I'm going to, we're going to create a bunch of patterns here, pattern shops. And so we have like a different seed for all of them. So that's why I'm like adding this. And the cool thing is with the pattern chop is that we have like this range thing that we usually use math chops for. We already have that integrated. So for my uh, rotation, I usually want to go to 360, right? So I'm going to remap this. So now every time I press one on my keyboard, we get a random value between zero and 360. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a limit because I don't want to like have a rotate in like a bunch of ways. We I just want to have like uh, different specified angles. So I'm going to change this to round and then 90. So now we have some nice values between like 90, like zero and 360, always with 90 degrees uh, steps, basically. I'm going to add a null. I'm going to call this rotate and use this on my rotation on the transform. So now every time I press one, not every time because sometimes it makes the same value because we're also um, rounding it, but still, you know, you get a sort of different rotation every time or sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to uh, copy this 
and put it here. So I want to do a similar thing for scaling. For scaling, uh, I'm just going to go here to my pattern and we'll basically want to change the range here only. So I'm going to change the range from 1 to 1.5. So sometimes we have the normal scale and sometimes we have a bigger scale. And on my limit, then I'm going to change this round to like 0.5. So we only have a value between 1 or 1.5. It's either, either one of those. I'm going to call this scale. Not skull, scale. And go to my channel here and also call it scale. It's just a, for clean cleanness reasons. <laughs> I'm going to use the, the scale on my scale. I'm going to push this slightly over there so I can see the connection. So every time I press 1, I might, like, you know, sometimes it might be a bit closer, you know, just just makes for a kind of interesting effect. You could even go up to 2 here. So sometimes it's very large. That might be cool, actually. All right. So I want to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy both of these. And uh, for the first one, I'm going to call this uh, brightness. And I'm going to get rid of my limit, on both limits, actually. And uh, again, I just want to change the range here so to 0.7 and 1.3. So as this is for brightness, I'm going to call this uh, brightness 2. Um, we just we don't want to have a brightness that's ever on 0, and we don't want to go too high with the brightness. So that's why I'm going to like 1.3. So I'm going to push that over here so we're above the level. And what I want to do is a very similar thing for the contrast, so point. Let's say 0.4 and 1.3. And let's call this channel contrast. And the null 2. Let's make both of them active. And use the brightness on the brightness parameter and the contrast on the contrast parameter. So now you can see we have a different brightness and contrast as well as different rotation and scale every time. And not only every time we press 1 on our keyboard, but also a different rotation. And oh, right, we also, need to <laughs> we also need to recreate all of them. And uh, let's connect that to the keyboard in too. So if I connect this channel to my recreate all operators, then every time I press 1, it's going to automatically refresh, so update all of these copies and uh, make them the same as my master. So now we have like a different level and rotation for each copy, which is great. Um, one more thing I want to add here, or change here, is uh, our cropping. Because we're using slices, we we'll, we'll want to do slicing, right? Or our output should be slices. So we we'll want to do uh, something here. And um, that's basically cropping this, like making the width or changing the width. So I'm going to, again, split my view and move back out here to my replicator because we want to make this width dynamic and based on the number of replicants. So I'm just going to use my number of replicants for the crop, right? Reference this. And then what I need to do is uh, not just use it this way, but add one divided by my uh, amount of uh, replicants. And then what I've got to do now is uh, use this fit because otherwise it's just going to be the width of this now. So it would be 102. So as we're going to work with rectangles that we put it on, we don't want it to stretch. So we want to add a fit and I'm going to just change this to like 1024 as well. So now nicely, it's, it's still a nice uh, rectangular or like, uh, how do you say? square <laughs> uh, square texture that we're using, but um, it's still sliced. All right, so I think this is uh, all we need to do here. Obviously, you can add like something like HSV adjust and change the saturation or, you know, any kind of manipulation that you want to add for these textures. But we can look at this later and I'm going to show you something with the chunks that you can add here to make this even cooler. All right, so. I'm just going to press 1 again. Um, what we want to do now is we want to add all of them sort of together into one texture that we can then use in instancing to put them onto uh, 3D objects, basically. So to do that, what I'm going to do here is add a switch top. And instead of connecting this manually like this every time, 
and then you know having to do this every time we press one because it's going to break this connection we can just add a little expression in here very short simple expression to connect this automatically so we have this for loop already in here so for c and new ops so it's basically just looking at all the operators that are being recreated that's being added every time so we can just access them by typing in c and then we're going to type in output connectors like this and then we want to use output connector zero so there is only one but you know we just want to specify this just output zero and then we just want to connect that to our switch one. So I'm going to type in connect. It's this function to do that. Brackets. And in these brackets, we want to type in op switch one. And then we're done. So now if I press one on my keyboard, it's going to automatically nicely connect all of these to my switch. So as you can see, we only can see one here. But that's like, it's no problem. Uh, we're going to look at this in a second. Before we advance here, I want to set up my render network so you can actually see what, what, what this is all about. So to do that, we're going to start with a rectangle stop. And I'm going to add a transform to it. Actually, I'm not really going to do anything to transform. It's always good to have there. Uh, I'm going to add a geo as well as a camera. On my Geo, I'm going to go to Instancing and turn this on already. And on my Cam, I'm going to go to View and then R for Graphic. And uh, change this to like 1.4. I also want to have a constant material on my Geo. And we want to add a render top, of course. I'm going to change my resolution to 1280 by 1280. So I have a square output. And I'm going to add a level and a transform just so we're, so we're in control of the output. I'm gonna add like a black background here. So one on the alpha and then come over background color on and add a null and call this BG. And display this in the background. Let's actually uh, just go down with our alpha. It's gonna complain, but whatever. So just so we're not distracted for now. I'm gonna push this a bit over here. So let's make our instance channels and we're gonna do that in tops. So to start, we're going to add a ramp top. And what we need to change here is first off the pixel format to 32 bit float. It's important. So we have a value range that's outside of zero and one. And we also want to change the resolution. So we don't want to have any Y resolution. So basically we do have a Y resolution. It's just one pixel. And our X resolution should be the same as our number of replicants because and we want to have as many instances as we have textures here, basically. So I'm just going to right click here and copy this parameter, go to my ramp and right click and paste the reference. Cool. And uh, then I'm going to add a math to this. And on this math, I'm just going to go to my arrange R and change this to like minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. And then add a null to this. Call this pause. And go to my geo. Actually, let's push this too far. And on my geo, I'm going to use my pause as a translate OP and use uh, R as X. So right now, we don't want to see anything. I'm just going to go up with my alpha again. What I'm going to do is add a null here. And it's called this text array, even though we don't have an array yet. And use this on here as a texture. We actually have to turn on blending in the common page. And then we can see uh, they're nicely being put like next to each other, right? We have 10 textures nicely being aligned next to each other. And that's already working well. But we want to have a different texture for, for every instance, right? So to do that, we need to set up a few more things. So I've already shown texture instancing in a few uh, tutorials of mine. We're just going to do that again. So on my switch, I'm going to add a little expression here called me.time.frame minus one. And then that just makes sure that it sort of goes through all of my textures, like in a frame by frame. That doesn't actually, like it already looks really cool, but um, it, it doesn't actually change like the texture for every one of these. So what we need to do is we need to add a texture 3D. 
and turn on prefill and change the type to 2D texture array. And then we also want the cache size to be the same as our number of replicants. So again, copy this parameter, number of replicants, go to texture 3D and paste the reference on cache size. So if I now click pulse, you can see it loads all the different textures of these replicants in, in here into an array. But now we need to tell it to also look for them on, on the different instances. So to, that, to do that, what we need to do is to create a map, like a, basically a channel that is looking for all of these textures. So on my map, I'm going to change the uh, range here to, uh, like I've, I still have copied the number of replicants. So I'm just gonna paste the reference in here. And then I also need to add minus one after that because we're starting at zero. Let's also change the interpolation here. I'm gonna add a null to this, I'll call this index. Go to my geo one to the instance two page. And I'm gonna use my index as the texture coordinate P and for W I'm gonna use R. So basically, uh, you know, now we can, we're using all of these textures. Basically we're just using this channel to go through all of these textures and to pick a different one for every instance. So that is uh, really the basic idea of this uh, system. So we have a bunch of different re replicants or like, you know, a bunch of copies of this master, which is just manipulating these uh, inputs or this one input texture in uh, like, you know, in a random way based on uh, like this, yeah, based, based on patterns and then based also on the digits of the, of the copies. And then we, we're basically using instancing to just display them in a 3D space. So let's continue. There's still a bunch of stuff we can, we can do. We're not at the end yet. <laughs> well, it's a lo longer tutorial. What we wanna do here is add some more randomness, but not only to the textures, but also to the way they are displayed. So first off, uh, we can add some scaling. So I'm gonna add a math here. And uh, a now, let's push all of these a bit over here. Let's also make this, give this a color. Now this is like the base, important. And I'm gonna call this now scale. And then on my math, I'm going to change uh, the ranges here. So I don't wanna have a scale of zero and I don't wanna have a too big of a scale. So, oh, so I wanna change this to like 0 0.01 and two, uh, not two, 1.2. So um, then I'm gonna go to my geo instance one, use scale on scale OP, and for scale X, I'm just gonna use R. And basically now we have a scale that is just like changing with the way, right. There's actually one thing we, we need to add here. So because every time I press one now, it doesn't update our texture for D, we have to press pulse here. So there's a little trick to do that because if we just go ahead and uh, use our keyboard in, to prefill, you're gonna see it's gonna go back to what we had before. So basically the same texture being copied on every instance. And that's because the, uh, the basically the data that's being sent here to pulse this is faster than the replication. So we need, to, we need to give the replication some time and we can do that with a timer. So I'm gonna add a timer, add a null to it, which I call delay. And on my timer, I just wanna have the output of done pulls. So I can turn off everything else. I also wanna add this, uh, the keyboard in as a second input. So we both wanna restart and initialize this. And we can just go down with the length to like 0.2 seconds. So basically this is just gonna give us a delay, like a slight delay of, of the keyboard in. You, you could maybe even do this with a delay chop actually, <laughs> but never mind. This works uh, well. So on my texture free, I'm just gonna use this delay channel on my poles. So now if every time I press one, it's gonna wait uh, for a second, like for 0.2 seconds <laughs> uh, to uh, re, like refill our texture array. So this way we can press one, we have like a different, different texture every time. And actually uh, one thing we might wanna do here is to, to add a bit more. Yeah, there's actually one thing I wanna change in the beginning here. 
and that is to add a pattern shop because what we, what you can see here is that it just sort of goes like you know just goes through the left every time I press one to change that we hack we can just add another pattern here as a constant and let's just let's just call this base add an all here and call this one seed and let's change the length here to one and to type to random and use our base on our seed here. So now this is actually uh, working a bit nicer. It completely randomly changes the seed every time. All right, so that is working well. Let's go back <laughs> to here and add some more randomness. So as you might think already when you hear randomness, we are going to use some noise. So first off, let's actually not just use scaling from like left to right. So it goes big, gets bigger from left to right, but actually use noise to do this. So I'm gonna add a noise here. Let's uh, turn, change the RGB to just noise. And um, we can, yeah, we can just leave it as monochrome for now. And for the seed, again, I'm going to use my seed on here. And what I'm gonna do is just add like plus 10 or something. So we have, I'm gonna change this to zero again. So we have a different uh, seed than, than other operators. And so yeah, so we have different scaling, random scaling every time. And by the way, I can go to my replicator and just change this to like 40, by the way. And then we have a bunch more uh, like replicants, uh, which dynamically, like the size and the cropping and everything dynamically reacts to the number of uh, replicants, which is cool. So maybe 30 is a good number here, or 24, because it's my favorite number. <laughs> right. And uh, for the for uh, the positioning, we can do the same. Or also for the index, like let's actually look at that. It's kind of my favorite thing to do. We can add another noise. And uh, we don't really need to change much here, apart from you know we can just actually let's just copy this and use it here. And instead of ten, we might just want to type in five. So we have again different seed. And the cool thing is, you know, this is already kind of interesting. But the cool thing is now we can go down for exponent and then we get these repetitions, right? It's not completely random, but it picks like it often picks the same ones because it, it's not like a smooth noise as it is here, but it's sort of more, more steppy. And this is, I think this looks so cool. So um, this is a lot of fun, actually. And if you have the right input textures, you can create some really cool art with this. And it's like completely generated, right? Cool, and another thing we can do here is basically the same thing uh, for positioning. So let's just um, change this to just noise. Uh, turn off monochrome, because we might want to use a Y as well, so G. And um, yeah, you can already see this is working. We're basically just, uh, we have different kind of positions and we can use the same, like we could use G for, for Y. And then we could go here and change it to like minus 0.6 and 0.6 as well. And then we're like, or maybe not as much, maybe 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2 and 0.2. And then we, we have this sort of, they're not in a straight line. Uh, we've got to do the same thing here. Let's just copy this parameter past the expressions and change this to like maybe two. So we have a different set up every time. Cool. That is looking nice. I kind of like it more if it's just in a straight line and uh, without the Y. It's kind of my favorite look. So um, I think for the slices, we're, we're kind of at the end, but that doesn't mean that you can't experiment with this on your own. So obviously you can add a lot more stuff here. You can add like rotation and you can, you can yeah, just mess with these <laughs> channels. And uh, I think the most fun you can have is by changing these uh, co these copies, by changing the textures and each slice. So one thing would be to add HSV adjust, or you can even add like feedback loops in here, anything really. So uh, being always uh, maybe using this, uh, this sort of idea of using a different seed. Yeah, there's a bunch of shit you can do here. And we're gonna look at the chunks now. And yeah, let's just switch over to that. All right, so if we move out, all we need to do for the chunks for now <laughs> is to copy and paste the slices and rename them to chunks. 
And then obviously you need to go in here and change a bunch of things. So first off, let's actually delete our geo here and add a new one. That's because kind of if I just if I just uh, delete all my links, then for some reason the new touch designer version crashes. So let's just reuse our constant as a material. And uh, let's already go ahead and turn on instancing and go to instance two and use our index. Um, no, let's just do that later. Actually, let me just copy this ramp, put that in here. And um, now use our <laughs> use my index here and use our SW. All right, so that's working nicely. And then I'm gonna get rid of uh, these. Actually, I'm gonna leave my ramp. And we're uh, like the, the basic idea now is before we were like uh, here in the slices, we are displaying our different uh, copies as slices, as like cropped slices, uh, just like next to each other in, in, a, in like a column or in columns. And what we wanna do now is we wanna display our different copies here not in a not in like one row, but actually in like a grid and not in slices, but in, in squares. So I'm gonna actually go down with my number of replicants, to like 10. And on my ramp, I'm gonna change the resolution here. So instead of 10 by one, I'm gonna divide 10 by two. If, if you divide it by two and then add two here, we now have again, the same resolution. So we divide by two and then we multiply by two, right? So this means we have 10 uh, instances now. And then I'm gonna just copy this ramp, change uh, the interpolation to ease in, ease out, kind of work better for me. And I'm gonna change this to vertical and use this as an input. So we have the same resolution and I'm gonna set resolution only. All right, so, um, then I'm gonna add a noise from here because we wanna, we wanna create three different channels basically, right? We wanna create R, G, and B. And while we're creating B, I will get back to that in a, in a minute. So I'm gonna change this to uh, just noise and uh, in, in your pixels. And uh, I'm just gonna use my seed again and like just zero and then add like two. So every time I press one, I have a different noise. And from the first one, by pressing middle mouse, I'm gonna add a reorder and just put my ramp free as a second input and my noise as a third input. And I'm gonna change output green to input two and output blue as input three. So if I change my viewers movements to nearest pixel here, I should get this colored grid. Cool, what I can do now is uh, just add like a, a math to this. And I'm gonna change my ranges here. So I'm gonna change uh, R and G to minus 0.5 and 0.5. Oops, so same here, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And I'm gonna get back to B later on. Get back to the B. <laughs> um, yeah and change that and explain what, what I'm doing there. So I'm also gonna add a null to this and call this pause for a position. So basically just creating the same channel again. I'm uh, using this pause as translation and I'm gonna use R for X and G for Y. All right, so now we can see sort of a grid of slices. We don't want slices though anymore. So we gotta go into our master and just bypass crop and fit. And now we have uh, slices, which is cool. So if we move out, you can see we have like a grid of, uh, not slices, <laughs> we have squares. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> what we can do here, what, what you can see here is they're basically stacked uh, over each other, but like based on, uh, like, you know, based on X pretty much from left to right. So we want to use some randomness to stack them uh, randomly and the Z space. So that's what I'm using this noise for. And I'm gonna change, the, we don't need to actually go, uh, like we, we, don't, we don't need to change the Z range to like, it doesn't have to be between zero and one, we can go to something like 0 0.01. That should be enough to, to have like different uh, Z positions. And then all we gotta do in our geo is to use B for Z. 
B4Z. And now if I press one, you can already see this is working pretty nicely. And actually, because we're using a sort of ramp grid here, we already have a nice grid. So you could just go with that. But uh, to make it a bit more interesting, what we can do is add more noise. Always good. <laughs> um, and in this, on this noise, I'm going to just change this to noise and add and turn monochrome off. I'm going to use the same ex ex expression as here. <laughs> Past expression. Paste, I mean. And now you can see we have completely random positions, but they're kind of too random for me, right? They're like, we have these, they're not in a grid anymore, basically. So to put them back into a grid, but still remain random, <laughs> to keep the randomness, we can add a limit. We can go to quantize, round, and then change the value here to value step to point. 2.5, and then we have a grid. We can also even go up to 0.5, and we have like a stronger grid. So now you have nicely, sort of, a nice grid. <laughs> I have been recording for way too long. Um, right, so that's one thing we can do. And obviously we can, again, create a little bit of scaling. So let's add a noise, and just noise. We don't need colors. We can just leave this as monochrome. Let's change both, both of these to nearest pixel. Can't even talk anymore. <laughs> Let's add a math. And uh, for this scaling, we want to have a range between 0.5 and 1.5. Again, let's change this to nearest pixel. And let's add another limit here because I don't want the scale to be just completely random. Let's again, change both of these to nearest pixel. Same here, just looks a bit nicer. <laughs> Doesn't really make a difference. And I'm gonna change my round here to 0.5. So we either have a scale of 0.5, 1, or 1.5. Let's just copy this. And let's call it scale. And I'm gonna use this on my scale OP and just scale X and Y of my R. So now we have like different scales and, and of our grid, which makes for more interesting variations. Okay, there's uh, one thing here. I no, <laughs> the fuck. My mind is just gone at this point. Uh, right. Yeah, there is actually one, one thing I want to show you. So if we go into our master, uh, I, I teased this in the beginning. There is uh, one thing I want to show you here. So let's just add a composite. And. Um, from our transform, I'm going to add a noise. Let's change a few things here. So first off, we just want to have the noise. I'm going to change my period to six. And we want to have to seed randomly as well. So I'm going to add my master. Let's just change this to zero and then just add like 999, whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's go down with our exponent. And let's add a limit here. I just love the limit uh, operator. It's really, really powerful. So let's both quantize the value to like round and then one and the uh, position to 0.25. And then let's now copy this parameter past the reference here and divide that by two. So the grid is offset nicely to, to fit in here. And then we're gonna use this and put in here, operation set to multiply by default. And now it cuts up the texture and because we're doing this for every texture, it cuts everything up even more. And I think this makes for a really interesting effect. So you can see this weird sort of grayish effect, and that's because of the contrast. So if we want to get rid of that, we can go to our level and just turn off contrast change. <laughs> so let's just reset contrast to one. So now every time we press one, we have no contrast change, but just the change of like everything else. <laughs> Uh, right, I think uh, this looks pretty funky and fun. And uh, there's actually one thing I want to show you that I sort of forgot. Um, and that is to add the original texture onto here as well. So let's add another composite. And um, use a select here, select top. And we want to select our original input here, so this one. Might even want to color this sort of like, gives us some color so we know it's important. Let's use this one and put it on the select here. And let's add a transform. And then let's put that into here. And now we have uh, even more interesting texture because we're like, 
we're we're creating all of this stuff that we already did, but then we're adding or we're like yeah, com compositing our original image with this. So we can change this to difference, for example, or like screen, or simply add or over. So uh, instead of uh, like this black background, yeah, let's go to our master. What we can do here is we can, uh, because of the composition here, we're adding black. So what we could do here is uh, change the alpha to noise. And now we don't have any black. So if I go back now, we now this is actually working a bit better. So either you want to have these black parts, or actually this is the better way to do it. I, I simply just discovered that um, while working on this tutorial. So it's always good to work on these tutorials because my my uh, projects are getting much better because of that. Um, yeah, so we're compositing that. There's still these sort of black parts because at some points there is no uh, there's no texture. So we could just use an over to always fill the background like this. But yeah, again, we could also change this to, I don't know, pin light or overlay. There's so many cool operations. I think pin light, I like that a lot. It's kind of chaotic, but interesting. Let's just, again, go back to over. One thing we might want to do here to add even more variation is to add a pattern again and to add some rotation. So pattern changes to random, length one. And then our seed, let's change that again to the seed. Let's just quickly turn this off so you can see this better. And uh, let's change the range to 360. Let's add a limit just as we did before and change the quantization to 290, round to 90. So we have a different value here every time. Uh, let's just call this rotate and uh, use this on this transform that we added earlier. So now we don't only, we're not only like varying our textures here, but also sort of changing the, the original textures. So we're slicing shit up even more. <laughs> and obviously you could just, let's, we can just copy this and go back into our slices. And uh, let's just move all of this over here. Just paste it in here and and do the same thing, right? So we're just adding that on top of each other, or maybe difference, or uh, pin light again, or uh, uh, what do you say, negate. There's a lot of interesting things you can do here. Multiply is also really nice in this case. So yeah, there's uh, even more options like that to to mess around with the uh, with the textures, right? So um, I think we're, we're kind of at the end of this rather long tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm very much looking forward to all of your results. So I yeah, just want to use this uh, last, these last seconds <laughs> of this video to uh, give a huge shout out to all of my patrons and a huge thank you. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy I can do this work based on, on your donations and yeah, so thanks a lot for that. And if you if you want to check out my Patreon, you can get some extra files and extra content and meetups and all these kind of things. So thanks a lot and thanks a lot for watching and I will see you on the next video.